as many of you know, I have a major problem with people not doing the right thing, especially mechanics. It, it just, it, cause it gives the industry a bad name. If you're gonna do a job on somebody's car, if it's your own car, it's one thing. But if you're gonna do a job on somebody else's car, do the right thing. If you're gonna do a brake inspection and you have no idea if you can't really clearly tell that the brakes are worn, pull the wheels off. Don't just upsell brakes because you think it needs brakes. Another thing, older cars with drum brakes. Let me show you something. I have this Ford Ranger here that I'm working on. The customer wanted me to check the brakes. Now, it's clear. I could see the front brakes clearly. They've been done before. It's got plenty of life left on the front brakes. I checked inside and outside pad without pulling the wheel because I could see them clearly. So there's no reason to do anything there. And I test drove this thing too. And it kind of felt a little mushy, like the rear brakes were out of adjustment. Like I said, it's drum brakes. But let me show you something here. So here's the vehicle, Ford Ranger, it's a 2002. So now the vehicle's 20 years old. Okay, I haven't pulled the drums off yet. But I want you to look here. Now you notice where the wheel studs are, right? It's this side. Okay, I'm telling you right now, this drum has been off at some point in this truck's life. Now, we come over to this side, and I see this. Do you know what that is? That's an assembly line retaining clip. What they do is, when the rear end is assembled, and usually it's assembled outside the vehicle. It's assembled, the drum brakes are put on, everything else, the drums are put on. They put those clips on to keep the drums on, because otherwise the drums could fall off. This way, when they're moving it around and getting it ready to actually put in the vehicle, the drums are still there. They're for assembly. They serve no other purpose. You don't have to put them back on if you take them off. This truck's 22 years old. That drum has never been off in 20, 22, sorry, 20 years. That drum has never been off. Really? In 20 years, nobody's bothered to pull that drum off. How do you know how good the brakes are? How do you know if you got a wheel cylinder stuck? I've seen seized wheel cylinders. How do you know? How do you know unless you pull it apart? This is what drives me insane. Do the right thing. This is my rant for today. Do the right thing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this drum off on this side and I'm going to see what this looks like. And then I'm going to get a pair of cutting pliers to pull those retaining clips off so I can get the drum off on the other side. I think this drum should come off relatively easy. Let's see. Okay, it moves, but I'm going to have to do this two-handed probably. Oh wait, there it goes. It's coming off. All right. So now this is the first time I'm seeing this. Drum's got a lot of dust build up in it. So I'm just gonna dump that outside instead of on the floor in the shop. So let me turn my little light on. It's kind of interesting. It has a bonded shoe in the back. This is a bonded shoe. And in the front, it's got a riveted shoe. See that? So now, looking at everything in here, it looks okay. You know, nothing spectacular. Now, the other side, I don't know what that's going to look like. So, let's get that apart and see what happens. Like I said, first, I need to get a pair of cutting pliers. Because you use a pair of cutting pliers, you grab one of these little tangs here, and you pull up on it and basically rip it off. So, let me go get that and get that done. What you do is you take a pair of cutting pliers, and you kind of go like that. <clears throat> let see if I can't. You've got to grab the little flute there and rip it up and out. And then you can get that clip off relatively easy. Like I said, there is no reason to save this. Throw it out. Sometimes it could be a real pain in the neck to get off. The ones that are a real pain in the neck, just try to jam a screwdriver behind it to get a little room away from the drum. So now, I don't think... Yeah, this drum is seized on there. 20 years in place, of course it's going to be seized on there. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a hammer and I'm going to wrap it here, 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 here. And usually that will shock it enough to free it up. Because it's basically just held on by rust at this point. Now i got my trusty dead blow. Now sometimes a single good wrap will do it. But that didn't. And sometimes you got to do that over and over and over again to break it free. If that doesn't work, take an air hammer 
with a flat end on it and you start hitting here and going circles and keep going and keep going and keep going they, that'll jar it free eventually so let's see if i can't get it with the hammer i'm not going to film the whole thing all right and here we go i think it's going to break free this time let's see there actually see how it popped so now the drum should slide right off okay <laughs> look at that all right let me put this drum down out here see it's a mess inside the drum so what do we have what did i say that looks like leaking wheel cylinder i don't think it's an axle seal the reason i don't think it's an axle seal is because if you look in there you would usually see a buildup of crud i don't see a buildup of crud <clears throat> so it looks like the wheel cylinder is leaking and it contaminated the shoes in the process so it looks like we're going to be doing a pair of wheel cylinders and rear brake shoes. And considering the age, I may get a spring kit for this too. Uh, let me show you one other trick when checking rear wheel cylinders. Let me go get a little screwdriver. So what you want to do is you want to take a little screwdriver, go in between the boot like this, and try to pick the boot out. Let me switch hands here. Because I'm a righty, not a lefty. And... There you go. Look at that in there. That thing's leaking. It's all munged up. So we're going to get shoes, wheel cylinders, and a spring kit. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this whole thing. Um, I cannot show you, I don't have time to make a full video on doing rear drum brakes. I will make one in the future. I just can't do it right now. Um, but just a real quick show here. This is a tool that is used... Whoops. I'm going to throw it on the floor. Here's a tool you use to get the springs off. Like that. Like that. So that's for that part. There's another tool to get that spring off right there. So, like I said, I cannot show you an entire video on how to do this, but I'm going to take this all apart right now. All right, so one side is assembled, and I got the wheel cylinder in, everything that's done there, the line's tight. So I've got to bleed this side once I put the drum on and stuff like that. I got to adjust it too. Uh, I got to get the other side done, and then we're going to take it for a quick road test. So the one drum that was on the right side has got like a coating uh, mixed between the brake dust and the uh, brake fluid itself. So what I'm going to do is basically clean that up with brake clean and a couple of rags, get that nice and cleaned up, and then I'm just going to use like a Scotch Brite pad and scour it down a little bit, uh, brake clean it again, and install it. I'm not cutting the drums or anything on this. Is just kind of like a budget-friendly uh, repair here. And there you go. I just hung it backwards up on the vehicle just to show you uh, what it looks like and how it came out. And it looks a lot better. Like I said, there's no re reason to cut it. It didn't have any type of pulsation or vibration. So now I'm going to put that on, uh, do the other side, adjust the brakes, and then bleed them. And then uh, we're going to take it for a road test. All right, so I'm all done with this now. Um, I bled the brakes out, Mo helped me with that. I got the brake, got the wheels all adjusted and everything else. Uh, I just took it for a road test, everything's good. But the point of this video was do the right thing. If you're gonna do a brake inspection, do the right thing. Actually look at everything. Don't try to upsell brakes if you haven't pulled the wheels off. That's just wrong and you know it. Um, I've always been a firm believer in it, you know, you do the right thing. Because if you go to sell brakes and then a customer comes and wants to look at it and you don't have to have the wheels off, how does that look? Come on, seriously. And you're trying to sell brakes, let's say rear brakes, and I've seen it happen where somebody didn't even pull one side drum off, they pull the other side drums and oh look, it's just worn out. And then when they go and take the clips off and remove the other side, they find, oh, I got an axle seal leaking and a blown out wheel cylinder too. So now you got to go back and tell the customer that. How did you not notice that in the beginning? Well, because you never pulled the drum off. So it's just, you can hear it in my voice, I get real irritated with it, and I, I will never let somebody who works with me do that. Never. Do the right thing, always. So in the future, I'm gonna make a video on doing rear brake shoes, um, the right way to do it, including replacing wheel cylinders and stuff like that. I just, I couldn't do it today. I just things weren't working out the way I wanted it to with that. So I just, that's why I didn't do it today. So, 
Anyway, hope you got something out of that video. If you could please hit that like button. If you could please subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe. That's it. Have a great day. Keep wrenching. One person get down.